everyone. Welcome to our second chapter, uh, which um, um, which is about um, number systems and uh, and computer architecture. Uh, for those who have just joined, uh, who have just joined us now, my name is uh, Mr. Quendesa. So the objectives of this uh, chapter. It's um, one of them is to introduce you to the concepts of number systems in computers, as well as to give you an insight into computer software. And lastly, uh, it's to introduce you to basic computer architecture. So the scope of what we are going to talk about today is number systems, introduction to computer architecture as well as computer software and then we are going to conclude so with number systems a number system is defined by the set of values that each digit can assume and by an interpretation rule that defines the mapping between the sequences of digits and their numerical values what does this mean we're saying a uh, number system is defined by the set of values uh, you should note this word, uh, set of values, values that each digit can assume by an interpretation, interpretation rule that defines mapping between the sequences. So these are the th three things that I want to uh, emphasize on. Uh, let's say we've got a number that is uh, one. Uh, 20 uh let's say 125 and uh 251 251 251 as you can see we've got one two and five for 125 and then we have two five and one for 251 both uh, these numbers, they have the same numerals. They have one, two, and five. Do we agree? They have one, two, and five. But then, is the, is the set of values that are in here and how we interpret the sequence of digits that makes them different. So one, two, five, we go back to the abacus. One is for hundreds, two is for tens, and the five is under units. Hundreds, tens, and units. This is what makes, uh, it makes these two uh, numbers different. Because what we know is that one here, one here is larger than two. Why? One here is larger than five. Why? Because of the weight that it's carrying. So we are in what we call base 10, base 10. So each number is carrying a weight of 10 to the power sum. So um, this one, the 5, it carries a weight of 10 to the power 0. The second one, it carries a weight of 10 to the power 1. The third one carries a weight of 10. To the power what? 2. So 10 to the power 0, any number to the power 0 has a weight of 1. Then 10 to the power 1, it's just 10. Then 10 to the power 2, it's 10 times 10. So that we have 5. When we want to see the weight of, when we want to compare this 5 and a 1, we say 5 times 10 to the power 0. This is 5 times 1. And then this one is 1 times 10 to the power 2. So it's the different weights, the different weights. 
and the sequences, the position where you find the number. So this two here is greater than five. Why? Because of the weight. It's carrying a weight of 100. This five is carrying a weight of uh, tens. It's just like money. Let's say we've got $100 bills, and then we've got $20 bills, we've got $5 bills, and $1 bills. Uh, I mean, for US dollars, we've got 100, 50, 20, 10, 5, and a 1. So let's say when you have $100 and probably five uh, $10, five $10 notes, the hundred dollar bill is more because of its weight. If you have, let's say, five ten dollar bills, you have five times ten, you have fifty. So this is, you know, where the number systems came from. And as you can see, this is an abacus that I was telling you to go and check out. The abacus it gives us values for numbers in a, you know, in a sequence. Let's move on. So a number system is defined by the set of values that each digit can assume. Uh, so that's what I was saying. So we've got different bases. We've got uh, the number system uh, binary, octal, decimal, and hexamal. So we're going to talk about binary. Binary. That's what we're going to talk about, binary. And as well as uh, decimal, because we'll be converting from decimal to binary. So let's move on. So computers are made of a series of switches. So inside a computer, you find switches. And then these switches, uh, let me pause a bit. Let me pause a bit. Uh, all right, so um, I'm going to proceed. Uh, so I'm saying computers are made of a series of switches known as logic gates. So inside this computer, you, sign, you find a circuit board with a lot of switches, transistors. These transistors are like switches that go on or off. So instead of saying that machines use on or off switches, let's just say they use zeros or ones, zeros or ones. So each switch has two states, on or off. So it then translates to zero for off and one for on. So binary. Most modern computer systems using binary logic. They are using binary logic because of those switches. The computer represents values zero or one using two voltage levels. So you go on to see that for us to switch um, those switches, to switch them on, those switches inside the computer, is either we give them a voltage, or let's just say a charge of either five volts or 3.3 volts, or a low voltage of zero volts. You're saying that it's a cable which has electricity or no electricity. When it has electricity, it's on, no electricity off. So the binary number system is best to only um, the digits 0 and 1. So we say computers use binary. Binary just means two states. Just like our sex uh, is in uh, binary, we've got uh, male and female. I don't know for... Now in other countries, we have... Uh, transsexual but then uh, you know god created men and women so we have got on or off zero or one so uh let's look at the abacus for the abacus for our um for our um for our binary numbers so we give weight to each and every number so let's say let's say uh we are in base two uh, instead of saying units, tens, and hundreds, uh, let's let's start here. Forget about uh, let let's start here. Let's start here, going to the right. Forget about all this. Let's forget about uh, this side. So we're saying that here we've got uh, instead of writing units, let's just say we've got two to the power zero here, two to the power one, two to the power two, two to the power three, two to the power four, two to the power five. So for two to the power zero. This is the number that we put to the extreme, to the extreme right, uh, which is a one. So when you have bits, let's say you've got one, zero, one, one. Why am I putting one or zero? I mean binary. I don't have two or I only have zero or one. Let's say I put a one here and then I put a zero here. 
So this number is binary. It's binary 101110. That's how the computer would see this number is. What about us human beings? Because if I tell you, um, um, can you give me 100110 uh, oranges? What would you make uh, out of that? You say, ah, this person is crazy. Um, or maybe this person is an alien from the computer world. So how then do I convert this so that I get to know the actual value of 10110 in decimal? So what you have to do, you just have to multiply the zero and its value, the one here and its value, the one again here and its value, the one here with its value, the zero with its value, the one with its value. And then we sum them all up, we sum the weights so that we get you know, uh, the, 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 uh, the actual value in a language that we understand. So zero times one is zero. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be two plus four, uh, that's six plus eight, that's 14 plus 32. Why am I skipping this? Because it's time zero, so it would be zero. So it's essentially, it means, uh, what does it mean? It means that, it means that, um, it means that here, yeah, these positions with, uh, with a zero, the positions with a zero, like this one, yeah, it's got a zero. This one, it's got a zero. We just forget about them because the weight will be zero. So let's say it's 32 plus 8, 40, 44, 46. That's it. 2 plus 4, 6, 14 plus uh, 32, 46. So if I say give me 10110 oranges, it just means that give me 40. Six oranges. So that's how I converted this. So if I'm to also write a number like, uh, let's say, um, 52, I want to uh, put it in binary 52. So how do I put 52? 52, I have to first take out the largest number out of 52, the most, the heaviest bit. I have to take. 32 so i put one against 32 and then i'll be left with what i'll be left with 20 so 20 i'll take out 16 and then i'll take out four the rest of the, these bits have zero zero and zero so in binary 52 is one one zero one zero zero to convert into a chain of uh, let's say six bits let's move on so converting base to to base uh, 10 that's how uh, I did let's say um, this value you just have to multiply the weight uh, like here the, this was one uh, zero zero one one in binary so in decimal, you just have to say 2 to the power 0 times 1, say 1, plus 2 to the power 1 times 2, plus 2 to the power 2 times 0, 2 to the power 3 times 0, 2 to the power 4 times, uh, I mean, um, I mean uh, 2 to the power 4 times 1 here, and then you get 19. So that's how you convert. Um, or you can simply use the long division uh, way. Uh, which we did in secondary, uh, secondary A level, I think. Then decimal numbers, like I said, these are, this is just an abacus. We've got units, tens, hundreds, hundreds. Uh, we've got thousands, th for thousands. Then we've got tens of thousands. So the decimal number system uses base 10, which means that all the digits are weighted values, uh, they are weighted at, at 10. So the number system that we use in our day-to-day -day life is the decimal number, because we don't say, give me 1101 one, oranges. I say, give me 10 or 5 or 50 or so, or so forth, because we use numbers, uh, a choice of numbers between 0 and 10. 
So in decimal system, the successive positions to the left of the decimal point represent uh, units, tens, hundreds, thousands, and so on. That's the abacus. And then we've got what we call hexadecimal. Hexadecimal uses zero up to nine. And then from nine, instead of writing 10, we put A, 11, B, uh, 12, C, uh, 13, D, 14, E, and 15, uh, it's a C. So that's um, a hexadecimal, which we are not going to dwell much on, so I'll move on. So let's let's look at the computer architecture. So computer organization, the organization of the computer, from which computers are built, we integrate a lot of components inside the computer to achieve what we call an integral or overall performance of a computer. The processors that we spoke about, the RAM, uh, we have uh, other peripherals. We've got the uh, hard disk drive. We have the um, uh, the uh, the buses. We've got what we call the buses. But for these peripherals to communicate, there are some buses or some connecting wires that connects the RAM and the processor, the processor and you know the keyboard and so forth. Uh, so uh, taking a house as an analogy, computer organization examines. The number, uh, the lumber, the bricks, the nails, and other building materials while computer architecture looks at the design of the house. So that's what we are going to talk about. So we have what we call the bus architecture. So we've got this group of wires which carry information from the processor, the CPU, to peripherals and vice versa. Because the CPU, this is the HQ, this is the headquarters, um, this is like uh, uh, the, the, the Shake Shake building or the harvest house building of, of, of our computer. So most computer systems use the three buses or three wires, the wire that carries addresses, the wire that carries data, and the wire that carries controls these three main buses. So we have the address bus, which is unidirectional. It means that um, it's a group of wires which carries address information bits. Because we've got bits, like I said, information is you know it's sent as switches like on off on off and then it goes so we've got an address uh, bus which carries um what we call information bits to the process um then we've got the data bus which is bi-directional it's a group of wires which carries data information bit from the processor to peripherals and vice versa and then we've got the control bus which is bi-directional it's a group of wires which carries uh, a group of wires which carries control signals from the processor to peripherals and vice versa. These three main buses are what we use. So let's look at them. Uh, let's say we've got our CPU there. Uh, this is our CPU. I have our CPU. And then let's say we've got RAM. And then let's say we've got our keyboard. And let's say our our screen, our monitor. So the CPU will be connected to the three buses. Uh, actually, all the other peripherals are connected. So the CPU, when it wants to send data, it just pushes it via a data bus. If it wants to send controls, it sends via a control bus. If it wants to locate something, it sends an address via the address bus. So the instruction cycle, how the computer operates, it fetches for information, fetches instructions from memory. Was in memory, I said RAM is where we store all the running programs. So when the program is inside RAM, the processor will then fetch for that program from the RAM or input or control register or anything. It switches from, you know, some kind of memory. And then it decodes, it locates the operands used. So let's say whatever it takes from the RAM, it then tries to make sense of out of whatever it takes from the RAM. Um, so, so that's what that's what it does. And then after taking instructions from the RAM, it then executes uh, the operation in the processor registers. We'll talk more about this, but then I'm saying this very simple terms that it then executes uh, what whatever it gets from the from the uh, from the from memory. So we've got different types of memory addressing modes which we are not going to discuss here because this is quite uh, deep and uh, we'll do that when we take the IT route. So what you have to understand is this. 
the computer I mean the processor the processor has a lot of instructions it's like a, a manual of instructions it carries a lot of instructions so we've got these two families of processors we've got the risk and the CISC the risk is uh like I said the processor is like a, a dictionary with uh, commands like yeah do this do that after doing this you have to do this and that and that so when the computer is processing something it just it's like the processor that sort of sending commands like the command center so we've got like a little mini uh command center and a very complex one the little mini uh, uh the processor or, or, or dictionary uh is risk we call it risk and uh these types of processors we find them in phones like our phone is a very small uh actually we call it a reduced instruction set uh, uh computer it's got uh a dictionary with less let's just say less um less uh commands and then the CISC is the processor used by computers and any other sophisticated uh hardware so it uses CISC it's more complex uh, which means that it's got more uh, command uh, words um so so these are the two types of uh, you know families of processors risk and CISC so that's why you see that um, when you are designing a, an application or a software you have to know uh, to which uh, hardware or to which processor that particular software is going to work so for the risk risk is usually uh, these little devices uh, the phones the um probably smart tvs uh probably uh yeah yeah with smart tvs uh phones uh if you know what we call the raspberry pi the raspberry pi they use risk uh and cisc is for you know personal computers desktops they are more you know it's more rich it's more rich uh the, the, there's more commands so uh like i said uh the division between risk and cisc um risk has got what we call simple instructions or let's just say simple commands uh, which take one cycle but then CISC uh, it's got complex instructions taking multiple cycles i don't want to um inundate you with uh, jargon that you are not going to understand uh, so we will take this well, when you take the it route that's when we are going to learn about risk and CISC in more detail but for now let's just say risk is for smaller devices such as phones and uh, raspberry pis or you know other microcontrollers then CISC is for you know more complex uh, personal computers so we will we'll get to see more about this later and then we are going to look at the uh at computer software a software is it sits on 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 um uh, on hardware and a software it's a group of programs these are just programs that have instructions uh, that we want to carry out on specific tasks. So a set of instructions are called programs and programs and data are used to control the hardware. So we use the software to control the hardware of the computer system, as well as to interface, uh, to interface uh, the user to a PC. So the software is usually defined as system software and application software. So these are the basic terminologies. I want you to go and find out the difference between application or system software. So um, uh, just a basic terminology uh, in software. We've got the high level languages as well as the lower level languages. We've got what we call the machine languages, the interpreters, system software, operating system. So this is i'm going to leave this for you to go and learn uh find out about some of these terms that you that might be new to you uh thank you for paying attention and uh we are going to uh do a discussion on this uh to tonight at 8 uh, p.m uh, that is if you are free to join us on um, the big blue button or google meets uh, thank you so much for paying attention.